welcome to the show, Carl Pilkington. K man, how are you? I'm all right, yeah. How was Steve Wright in the afternoon? Did he, look, did he Steve like you? Steve Wright, innit? Yeah, I got on with him. Does he not? Does I mean, he doesn't sort of not get on with anyone, does he? He's... Well, I asked him, I said, do you ever get any guests that you don't really like? Because you can never tell with Steve, you know, he's very professional. Isn't that? And he says even the bad guests he can make look good in yeah, that yeah, wizardry he's... of that sort of studio he's got as well. He's just there. I mean, I don't think, I've been on it twice now. Yeah. And uh, I don't think he moves. He just was sort of sloped in his chair <laughs> with Tim and uh, Jane sat there. And it's just like they wheel him in. There was another woman in before me, and he's just sort of sat there like some sort of... Is he alive? Do you know he's alive? They might just be putting his voice through him. He's, he's full of life, and as soon as that mic goes on, he's, he's Steve right in the afternoon. Did you do stick around for any factoids or anything like that? No. No. no yeah. Don't, don't, don't. <laughs> Get the book. <laughs> <laughs> so, K-Man, how are you? I worked with you for five years, and I've been saying you were kind of my boss. I mean, you made the jingles. You also came up with, because, to be honest, people, you know, if they found out what happened on that show of those five years, people get... We were very lucky at XFM then. Obviously, you started to work with Ricky. Yeah. We had Adam and Joe there, Lauren Laverne, Richard Bacon, yeah. Kevin Greening. It was uh, Zoe Ball. There were a lot of different presenters there. Some of them were alive. It was a, it was a great time. Um, no, okay, you didn't like it. I mean, I was just stuck in a room all day. Yeah, but I? of your own volition, you used to sit, Carl would sit in a small studio, you had to knock on the window to be allowed in, and then you would open the door or not open the door, or just sort of say, I'm a bit, a bit busy at the moment making jingles. It was like the Big Brother diary room on it for some people. They'd come in and have a whinge. <laughs> And and then people go, oh, Carl's miserable. Well, yeah, because I'm putting up with people's... It was like a confession booth in there. People come in and have a moan about the bosses and the MD. What are they doing? But when we got, got away with murder, radio, commercial radio wasn't under as much pressure then, right? Because I would routinely, in the first couple of years, we would spend sometimes two hours making a 30-second jingle that most people would never hear yeah. on XFM. Do you remember the American hostages people one? People who worked at XFM didn't listen to XFM. <laughs> I mean, it was, we were wasting our time. We should have just opened the window on Charing Cross Road and thought, well, there's someone who's just heard, heard the killer's being played. No, it was a waste of time, but we shouldn't moan about it because a lot of people have done all right out of that place. Well, namely you... Um, um, yeah, you, Mr. you know, there's right. posters I've done all right. Brian's now in management. Yeah, it's 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 like a it's you like used some to be sort of boss. American eighties movie, isn't it? Where <laughs> everyone like some sort of mad road trip, and we all find ourselves <laughs> sort of thing. But um, yeah, it has been a bit of a weird one because people won't probably won't know the story about how it came to because everyone knows you now with Ricky and the podcast and stuff like that. But when Ricky came back to XFM. You know, it used to be Claire Sturgis, you know, who would just press the buttons and it was it would they hired Ricky and uh, and Stephen. Yeah. I remember the first couple of weeks it was then and then Claire was was she off sick or on holiday for two weeks? I don't I, I don't know. I, I, all I remember is having a meeting with the boss at the time saying it's your turn to work with <laughs> the new presenters who come in. That's how it works, isn't it? Yeah. You get lumbered with you're sort of on a shift pattern <laughs> and you get a new presenter and they need someone for a bit. And Andrew was the boss at the time. He just said, "Right, you've got to work with Ricky and Steve." And, and were I you remember a fan the, of the show. I remember listening to to him um, when I first came to London, and I thought, "Oh, they're a nightmare." And she trying to work with them, and then it's like, "Oh, hello, how are you doing?" And I was I had to work with them, and they came in, and it was me against two. It's not that bad if it's one of you. I remember yeah. working with Gail Porter. And, you know, yeah, do you also remember what she said at the end of her first show? She was coming in to do a series of shows, right? She was, uh, she'd was just been on Big Ben. She was a very famous girl, right? She's a lovely girl. On she Big said, ben? To you, Do you remember they projected her image up on uh, Big Ben? Do you remember the, the, the oh, picture? Oh, yeah, of her? yeah, yeah, yeah. I thought, you meant, I thought that was like a Big Brother type program. <laughs> do you remember so her rude. on Big Ben? She was on Big Ben. <laughs> <laughs> Jeez. No, the what image of her was on Big Ben. Right. And so she came to XFM and everyone was very excited, okay? And then, if I remember this right, she asked you at the end of the show what you thought of it. Yeah, and I just, I just said, oh. Well, what annoyed me is... No, why didn't you say what you said? He went, it's all right, you ain't going to win any awards. And she started crying and never came back. Yeah, because it annoyed me that there was loads of people in there whooping. She did a link, she came on. Hi, I'm Gail Porter, it's XFM. Right, that's good. That's She's not from little... Ireland. What was that accent well, from? She did that, and everyone was going, that's great, Gail, it's great. And then I just sort of said, yeah, well, it was not going to win any awards, but meaning, let's make it better. You know, it's the, I wasn't having a go. It's the first show. It's bad for anyone's first show. I remember doing a show on my own, the first one. It was terrifying. But there's no point building her up. You've got to encourage them. And that was my way. I was sort of like Alan Sugar, sort of make it tough for them. 
and they get stronger quicker. But she didn't. She packed it in. I remember the uh, the night before I did my first ever show. I'd signed up to come down to Liverpool to take over the breakfast show. Before I was at working out garden leave, there was a three month break, and I came down. I remember to, that to do a Saturday morning breakfast show, like six till ten or whatever. And then Dermot, because Dermot used to do a uh, mid morning show there as well. D- it was before Dermot, so I was very nervous. I'd not met Dermot before. So the night before, I uh, the boss took us to the pub, and I met you for the first time. And I remember the first thing you said to me. You shook my hand and said. Well, I hope you're good, mate, because that show needs someone good. Are you going to be any good on it? Yeah. And I was like, uh, yeah, yeah, I hope so. And that was your pre-motivational chat, the sugar. Yeah, yeah. I remember, do you know what? I never told you. But do you know, like, I had to get a load of jingles and that made for you. Yeah. And I had some recorded. Yeah. That was just Christian Connell. Because I thought the O, I thought that was like your gimmick. <laughs> My thing is, I'm the man that drops the O. Well, like, no, like um, like your middle name was, I can't even think of a name again with O. But Owen. I thought Owen. Yeah. I thought it was that, and I thought, oh, I don't like that gimmick. Do you know, it seems like a bit sort of Dr. Foxery. <laughs> I thought, no, not Christian O'Connell. Let's just have Christian and Connell. And then Andy said, no, what, what, where, what, why is he saying Con- it's O'Connell? I'm going, no, but he's going, no, that's the name. And you're going, I don't like the name. He's going to have to change his name to Christian Connell. Christian Connell. I just thought, you know, people don't like him. But now worry, because you now have millions of downloads. I'm thinking maybe your weird brain picked up on something. There. Maybe if I want to be bigger than Evans and Moores, I need to drop the O. Try um, it. What, so tomorrow's show, can you get some new jingles then? It's just Christian Connell. Connell. The TV show then, An Idiot Abroad, how mm. did this happen? Um, I'm not saying how could you get on TV, I'm sort of no, saying... No, a lot of people are thinking that as yeah. well. But I, I, do you know what? It's really weird because I can't remember the point when I agreed to it. Yeah. I think... Um, Were they talking to the boys anyway? I and mean, they said... Steve, Steve was a big traveller. He thinks travelling the world is good for you. Um, he thought it'd be good for me. He said, oh, you know, what about if we sent you around the world? And I think I said, yeah, yeah, it'll never happen. Yeah. Because there was loads of other like offers of stuff, and they were all rubbish things. There's yeah. something about a programme about dangerous roads. That's what I'm wanting me to do. <laughs> and I said, well, I don't understand the connection. I've never been run over. Um, I, I don't understand what, why they picked me. And there was loads of things like that. I just thought, what's the point? And then Steve mentioned this idea, and I sort of said, whatever. And then I remember someone calling me from a production company. I was up a ladder putting a blind up for a mate. Yeah. And he called up and said, uh, this programme's happening. And I was like, right, what now then? And he said, oh, uh, I'll be in touch. All right then. And that was that. So I was none the wiser and I'd sort of agreed to it. And I thought it was going to be like a, a proper travel thing. Yeah. I thought, yeah, all right. Like um, Michael Palin kind of... That's what I set yeah. out to do. Hon- honestly, yeah. on my mum's life, I thought it's sort of that sort of thing, but with a younger person, uh, slightly. And, um, you know, that's that. And then it sort of, as I did the first trip, I realised it was just a wind-up, really, with Ricky. Mainly Ricky annoying me. What a surprise. You know, putting me up in horrible places, um, having to do horrible stuff. It's not really about the wonders of the world. Um, yeah, it was. I mean, I tried to get out of it. I called up, I did like three calls, um, saying I don't want to do this anymore. I want to, you know, I said, send the contract on email. I want to see if I can get out of this. <laughs> In India, I, I actually called up the director who was like in charge, but in London, saying they can have the money back. I said I cannot do this. I was ill out of both ends. Um, just, just it's not me. You know what I'm like. Yeah, I know. You you don't strike me as the kind of person that likes to travel too much. You've obviously done very well the last couple of years, but you most people will buy like a holiday home and maybe the France, the Riviera. You've got a place in Kent. Yeah, yeah, that's I like that. That's I as like, far as you like with to old go. People, yeah. I like um, not being out of my comfort zone. I just like to relax. Um, Travelling, you know, I mean, I've been to Spain and stuff, um, Mallorca. I- I'm happy with that. Getting yeah, a villa. Yeah, you really travelled the world there. No, but it depends what travelling is. Yeah. I mean, have you ever, you're having a go there, have you ever walked about with a rucksack on? No. That's what I'm saying. And no. a lot of people who you're are listening too old to this. To, I can't really do anything with that. A lot of people out there go, I agree with you. Yeah, you I've know. been to Taj Mahal. I've seen places like that where have you're you? like, wow, this is incredible. Have you been? Yeah. I but, thought it was an amazing place. I thought it was quite an awe-inspiring place. But well, like, did you stay in India or did you fly in, see it, keep the engine going on the plane? I didn't keep the engine going on the plane, but I saw some of the local culture and experienced it. Yeah, and I thought, wow, this is interesting. Did you stay in a kebab shop? <laughs> no. All oh, right, I didn't so you, you had a nice stay time, didn't you? But, um, but yeah, uh, that's what I mean. It's it's. Weren't you impressed by? I mean, like the Great Wall of China. I mean, these these are sort of very famous historical landmarks. You weren't in any sense of. What, what do you know about it? Why why do you think I'd be fascinated with? The... Well, you can see it from space. That sort of thing would appeal to you. Right. 
when you see it, you wouldn't want to see it from space. When you see how bad it is, you go, why would I go all this way to look at that? What, what do you mean bad? It's very old. A lot of it, well, you say that, the, the old bit is knackered. Yeah. If it was here, the council would say, right, <laughs> let's put some billboard and safety on, up. get it down. <laughs> the best bit, where the tourists go, it was built in like 85. <laughs> A lot of it. 1985, a lot of it was done up in. Now, that isn't a wonder. That's, yeah. a, that's a wimpy home, yeah. isn't it? That isn't an old uh, wonder of the world. And that's all I was doing. I didn't go to these places to, you know, just turn up and go, oh, that's rubbish, that. I went as if, you know, I know nothing about it. And then you see it and you don't, you don't let other tourists who are stood there going, oh, that's amazing, that. Oh, look at that. Oh, what about great. the Great Pyramids? You not wonder, how are they made? What's happened to get them there? The most amazing thing I've heard about the pyramids, and I didn't even find this out when I was there, it's after when I got back, <coughs> but they've moved three miles Have since they? they were built. How? Because the the plates on the world shift about, and that's pretty amazing. Yeah, that is incredible. But they, the pyramid, honestly, they're not good. When you see it on um, Sky One HD tomorrow night from Nice 9, bug. Um, you'll, you'll see it in HD, and you'll see how, how they don't look great. The Taj Mahal, it was my favourite one in terms of a wonder. So you're more impressed by stone cladding and a bit of four micro or something. These are wonders of history. They shouldn't look great. But it doesn't count if... The ta- you see, the thing with the Taj is it's old, it's got a nice backstory to it, um, it's well done. I was annoyed that it was built for a dead body because the place I was staying in when I was there was grim. And yet here's this amazing thing with a dead body in it. That annoyed me. But as a wonder, you go, yeah, I get that. It's amazing. The others are either, either falling apart or, like I say, the Great Wall of China built in 85. You know, that doesn't count anymore. So what do you think is a modern wonder of the world then? It, say the next series then is you I'm saying... I'm doing another series. I said that already. Well, what about if they let you compete the travel launch? You want to say, oh, you can do it all from your second home in Kent, OK? Um, and you can... Where would you say is a wonder, a, a wonder of I the modern world? I think soon as you call something a wonder, it ruins it. All right, it. then what about something that's quite impressive? Worth a second look. Carl's second look. I think the... Uh, there's a place in Wales called the Ugly House... Which has a nice, it has a nice story. Um, it, it, it doesn't cost much to get there, um, and it's like a little. I, I, I don't know if it's true, but I think it's where they invented. My dad, t- I used to go to Wales a lot as a kid, I'm sorry and we to used that. to pass it on the way. And he said it's where bungalows were invented by this ugly house because someone was building this house, and the fella who was having it built said to the builder, "That is ugly." He said, I've never seen a building as ugly as it's that. It's even got a dull story, though. The pyramids, you're like, what is that? Rather than the, what's the story with that? Oh, they were building a house. It wasn't very nice. It was called the Ugly House. Bang. Yeah, but I, I, I think it's, I think, like I say, it's because of all the people who turn up and they're all there and, oh, isn't it wondrous? And it's things like that annoy me. You know, it was meant to be, I mean, Suzanne, my girlfriend, saw like an episode and she's going, oh, you do moan. I said, I know, but it's, it's not that good. And she's saying, yeah, but that's meant to be the whole sort of icing on the cake of each trip. When you get to the wonder, yeah. that's like the icing on the cake. But when you think about it, the icing on the cake isn't the best bit anyway. I've no, never true. understood that saying. That's yeah. the bit you normally chip off. Yeah. And that's that's what I that's what I thought with the whole trip. The countries are amazing. To yeah. go to these places that I, n- I thought I'd never go to. I never thought I'd go to India. I never had any intentions of going to China. And seeing how they live, that is good. Yeah. I, if people want to do that, I'd say do that. That's good. But I tell you what, don't bother with the wall. Don't bother with the pyramids, because it's it's no good. It's a nightmare. You're being sold tat. You know, you're being pushed along with people. Hurry up, hurry up. I want to see the wall. You're being shoved. It's not a fun time to, to have, and you see that in the programme tomorrow night. Sky One Sky HD. One HD. So, nine o'clock? Nine o'clock, yeah. Probably on again at ten, isn't it? They sort of repeat it again. again Sky again. 2 will be on at ten, yeah, repeat <laughs> it. Well, listen, K-Man, it's nice to see you again. I w- I, I've seen the trails. It looks really funny. I will watch it. It's not meant. Remember, it's not meant to be funny as well. Just because Rick and Steve are in it, people go, "Oh, it must be a comedy." It's not. It's it's me, sort of out of my comfort zone. And there's times, especially in India, where I'm I'm having a breakdown. I can't handle it. So uh, I think it's a true travel log. I think it's probably the bits of Palin that they wouldn't put in. The outtakes of Palin. Okay, that's what I think of it when I'm watching it tomorrow. You've got to shoot off now, because I know you're off to uh, this morning. Uh, with, uh, are you going to do the Ugly House story there? Uh, what do you think? Yeah, please do, because I want to see that, please. I want to see your score I didn't for even get to the end of it. What? What happened? No, no, you'll have to tune into this morning. That's all. <laughs> <laughs> 